the tradition of Syracuse Hobart, dating back to the 1920s when Roy Simmons Sr. led Syracuse and Francis Babe Krause led Hobart. Both legends, both lacrosse Hall of Famers. To the current coaches, Roy Simmons Jr. of Syracuse, winner of 222 games in his 23 years on the SU Hill. And Hobart's B.J. O'Hara, the young gun. He's been part of seven Statesman National titles as an assistant and head coach. The players know how much this game means. When the Statesman and Orangemen beat, all the records, rankings, and national titles the two schools have won together can be thrown out. It's the true essence of a rivalry dating back to 1916. For the eighth straight year, the teams will play for the Krause-Simmons Trophy. It signifies the history of this great rivalry. Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Hobart Statesman with a 2-1 record. Visit the Syracuse University Orangemen from the Carrier Dome. Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. This is Dave Bryan alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's game, Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, when you talk essence of rivalry with these two teams, Syracuse and Hobart, there's not much more to say. This is just a great traditional rivalry. They used to have some great games. You know, people are talking about this rivalry ending, but last year was only 17-13, Dave. They've had some great games, but I, I think that it's possible that it may end. Uh, the chasm between Division Three and Division One is widening. And I think the fact that uh, Syracuse and the Division One teams have to schedule so many games makes it difficult, perhaps, for this, this great rivalry to continue. Keys to this game, Hobart, a very young team. They have 16 freshmen on their roster. It's going to be very difficult to compete with Syracuse, such a veteran team. Absolutely. And one of the things, you know, that uh, Coach Simmons does, Dave, is no matter who they've got, he always gets them psyched up for this game. He says, you know, a lot of them don't remember because his team, they don't remember when they lost to Hobart, but he says he does. And he get some psyched up so they should be revved up for the game despite the fact Hobart really not that an opponent that should really be feared perhaps as much as next week's Cornell team. We're looking forward to it very much. Division 3 against Division 1 from the Dome. Syracuse and Hobart coming up right after this. We are back at the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. Playing of our national anthem complete, Syracuse and the home whites against Hobart. And head coach B.J. O'Hara, he has built up quite a tradition there and kept the tradition going in Geneva. Part of a couple of national championships as a head coach. And head coach Roy Simmons, Jr. of the Syracuse University Orangemen. Not much more you can say about a great career he's had in his 23rd season. 79th meeting, Syracuse leads pretty big margin, 53-23 and two. The last Hobart win goes back to Geneva, Boswell Field in 1986. But as Dale, as you mentioned in the opening, last year's game at Boswell was nip and tuck till the very end. It absolutely was. Four goals separated them at the end. And uh, I'll tell you, people enjoyed that game last year. It was a super game to watch a lot of good competition. So, you know, you never can tell, but that guy has been very hot, number two for Syracuse. One of the reasons why uh, he has really kept them in the games and uh, some very important games. This one uh, he will be up for, I guarantee. I don't know about everybody else, but Saran is Mr. Intense. Bobby Wynn will face off with Bob Fazy for Syracuse at midfield, and we are just about underway in this game. Central New York rivalry is going. Hobart tries to get the initial possession. Sullivan has got it for Syracuse. He's going to streak in, maybe set up a play early on. Bounce shot put wide there from Archer. And Syracuse retains possession in the offensive zone. Goalie number 43 built a warder for the Statesman. Bit of a surprise. James Gracie, the freshman, has been starting and doing well. But B.J. O'Hara elects to go with a veteran. Matt Ryder loses on an early possession. Nice job by Higgins, 41. The defenseman took it away from Ryder. Starts the ball going the other way for Hobart. Dave Mapstone clears ahead. Good physical play near midfield. 
Todd Burnham, the right-handed cradle, watched by Rick Beardsley, one of the best long stick defend defenders in the nation. Outstanding player. He's a real takeaway guy, and uh, that is his specialty. They put him on Burnham. We'll see some matchups as they settle down here. What? Cable Maddox, number 14, is the big gun for Hobart. Player to watch. Tony Gray, a midfielder, number seven, has also carried the scoring load. But Cable Maddox has been their man so far this year. Eight goals and eight assists. He's got 16 points. Kugavan, number 18, will be defending on him. And Thorpe, number 10, also on his counterpart, Eric Curry, number 10, for Hobart. Hobart going to take their time here. They don't want to rush things. They want to get off good shots, Dave. They don't want to take a poor shot and let that fast break go the other way. So they're going to be patient. B.J. O'Hara making sure his team is very careful on his first possession. Beard is going to be called for a penalty from behind, but a delay call there. And he'll go into the penalty box. So man up coming up for Hobart. They're probably going to give him a trip. Let's see what they're going to call. Slash or a trip? Yep. Watch. As the, the stick comes down and trips him right there with the stick. And uh, that's a one-minute penalty. So Syracuse gives up their first man down. Actually, man up opportunity for Hobart, but man down for Syracuse. They've been doing great under 20%, something like 17 uh, in uh, man down situations. That's great for Syracuse, but uh, they've been doing a lot of it. Big key in the last two wings over Towson and Brown last Saturday here at the Carrier Dump. Cable Maddox, number 14, one of the players to watch. Eric Curry on attack. Man up for the Statesman early on. Tony Gray, number seven, and they are going to lose possession. Careless play in the offensive zone for Hobart. Tim Watt, number 19, couldn't handle it. Gray off the field. Syracuse will bring on a clear unit. Syracuse uh, going in there had uh, 35 man down opportunities and uh, only given up six goals. And that graphic came up the same time I opened my mouth. My mouth, Dave, good timing. <laughs> right on the money. Charlie Lockwood, excellent stick handler, great speed. We'll dish to Chris Saran, and what a year Chris Saran has had. 26 saves against Towson State a couple weeks back. And he poops you with it. One, one strategy right here is to put force the ball, and uh, Pusha gets it across. Pusha doing a nice job now to the offensive zone. Lockwood is going to wind up and put it wide of the net. They call him the lasers, we all know, and there's the reason with that whistling shot. It is tough to stop, much less see. Pucci in front. Good feed, Matt Ryder, and a score. The Orangemen have the first goal of the game, 12-32. In the first period, they lead 1-0. They got a jump on the defense, got behind him, and Warder was at his mercy. There's the initial pass in. Pucci looking. There's the pass, and off the stick side as they lost number 20. Mapstone, the defenseman, not able to stay with Ryder, and he just kind of took a soft shot past Warder, and it makes it one nothing. 12:32 left, first period. Matt Ryder's been playing so well, Dale, a 5'11", 167 pound senior from Homer. 16 goals coming in, make it 17 for the year. Violation is called against the Hobart Statesman. Non-possession penalty, so it'll be just a turnover, and Syracuse gets the ball on a hold, and now you get a sprint from the. Restraining line, laser sticks. Better to do that than Charlie Lockwood, another goal. What a burst of speed by the laser. From midfield, it's difficult for anyone to catch up with, even if you're uh, standing still. And you notice that they lost the faceoff, but of course it's what you do with it after you get the, the ball back. And uh, they got it back, and Lockwood just sprinted and handcuffed Warder. I mean, that was right about waist high, and, and that's really a tough position. You either got to come up or knock it out. And, you see the goal signified in a timeout taken by Hobart. Charlie, eight goals and assists this season. Heading in, make it nine. The All-American, he had two goals and assists this Saturday's victory over Brown. And B.J. O'Hara wants to talk things over with his statesman quickly. Down two zip, we're only a couple of moments into the first period. His team a little bit shell-shocked, perhaps, Dale. And B.J. wants to make sure that doesn't happen. I, I think, you know, like in any sport, there's, there are good timeouts, and that was a good one. You don't want to let that momentum get so far away, and uh, it really forces you to, to kind of refocus. And uh, next week, we got another big game coming up with the Cornell Big Red, the coaching staff here. I saw him in the press box with... Uh, Big thick notebooks and pencils ready to <laughs> ready to take some notes. I'm sure they're going to get their uh, pads filled tonight. Scouting out the game. 
Cornell Sholkoff Field has been host to a couple of games this year, including one played by Hobart early in the year because Boswell Field has simply been unplayable due to the poor weather conditions that we've had in central New York. And uh, Syracuse got a chance to look at Hobart last week because they came here and played in part of a doubleheader. So that's right. Uh, the, the artificial surface getting a big play in Syracuse area, central New York. Beat Ohio Wesleyan 13-12, a big game between Division Three rivals. Bill Water in goal. Syracuse so far dominating faceoffs early. Fazy and win, and Syracuse is going to win another one. Possession goes to the Orange, but uh, looks like a procedure violation, though, against the Orange. Dom Finn had the easy ground ball. Thorpe uh, came out of the defense of his goalie area there the, before possession was signaled, so they lose possession, and uh, Syracuse scrambles to get man-on-man -man as they usually play a man-on-man -man defense. We may see some zone from Hobart tonight. Right now, as Syracuse is playing defense. State's been hoping for their first shot of the game. Pat Kugerman, very physical defense, forces the ball to the top of the penalty, penalty box, restraining box, and Hobart back in possession and control. Their first possession, we saw a very patient play. This is Todd Burnham with a right-handed cradle. Orangeman keeping everything outside so far around the perimeter of the Bucks. Cable Maddox, good roll dodge move, good feed inside, but it's going to be picked up by Syracuse. Pete Lingclip is in for Rick Beardsley, and uh, he started a fast break. He gets it back, and he will go across. Syracuse stays on sides, and Lingclip comes back as they get the ball behind, Dave. Good feed inside. Shot that put by Doyle, and an excellent save from Warder, who was right there to stop it. His first official save of the evening just got it, so Warder started it the other way, and Hobart, uh, they changed people. They're going to slow it down a bit, so Beardsley not back after that tripping penalty. Possibly build some confidence for him. Brett Leary, number 13, one of the players out there. He's from Cortland. Todd Burnham, bounce pass, which is tough to handle. And Leary comes up with it, all right. Pass in front, good deflected defense. Doyle was there. Kugerman may have got a stick on that one as well. And Syracuse. the Orange will have a clear attempt. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, Hobart has been putting some pressure on the clear there. See there, you can't see now, you see Saran, but they got the wings covered, see right there. So they're gonna make, force the pass, and that you've only got 10 seconds to get the ball out of your zone, your defensive zone, and get it across now. And Thorpe helps out, they get to the midfield. Good feed, Roy Colsey will take it in, tries to split a double team. Excellent stick handler as well. Steve Bettinger backing up, but uh, that's gonna be a turnover and Hobart takes over. 10.05 to go, first period. Orangeman with a flurry early on, scoring two quick goals with less than three minutes expired in the first quarter, but since then play has settled down a bit, and Hobart is continuing with a very patient pace. Patient, they have had one shot so far, but uh, they are putting good defensive pressure on Syracuse. They're doubling the ball a lot. Tim Watt with it into the offensive zone, number 19. Tony Zaccanino is a freshman. Got four goals this year, number six. He's a dangerous player to watch as well. That pass goes right through the crease. And a turnover to the Orangemen. A classic look there as they look for the crease, but uh, they checked the stick. The ball went wide, and uh, they're going to lose possession. Well, let's watch Hobart here. Maybe we get a little wider camera angle. We'll get a look and see what they're doing on the clear against Syracuse. Oh, they backed off a little bit. Now there's a race down the sideline. Mark Fietta with it, number nine, with a right-handed cradle. Pina, good job, 22. See him going after the ball. See the orange? There's always seems to be two orange guys. And Syracuse gets it out. They've played aggressively so far, Dale. Very much so. Bettinger on the end line. That may have crossed it. And procedure violation is going to be called against Syracuse. Turnover to Hobart. So fairly solid defensive efforts now. Three in a row by the Statesman who thwart the SU attack. I think that's the, you know, the name of the game. You've got your offense, but I think you can do some things defensively with intensity and really put a lot of people and try to double the ball in that nice clear for Hobart. Well, they got a jump. Tim Watt with it. In front, good chance. That was deflected before he even got there. Absolutely right. Thorpe should get the save on that. He got his body in front. Saran didn't have to do anything except say thank you very much, Reggie. Zaganino got off a nice whistler. 
But Thorpe, the tri-captain from JE, comes from Elbridge. Cable Maddox with a right-handed cradle. They were kind of isolating him one-on-one -on, -one on Kugavan. Knocked from behind, Pat Kugavan, really a nice defensive play. He's been all over him so far. Absolutely. Good move by Smith to bring it into the offensive zone for the Orange with a long stick. And he's gonna help set things up before he retreats. They can bring another short stick on the field. A well, little thing in perspective there, Maddox is 160 and uh, he was playing against a Kugavan 213. <laughs> oh! Ryder hit from behind, no whistle. Fans wanted one. No call against the Hobart defense. O'Connor, 40, was the guy who got away with it. Casey Donegan digs out for the orange. And he's got a little break he's here. Ryder diving right on the... In the crease. Step there, but a crease violation is going to be called against Matt Ryder, who dives ahead. Try to near a gate there. Try to try to Gary Gate special. Watch. It Watch him off take right. off right right there. Oh, no, that's not the problem. The problem is the save is great, but he ends up in the crease. But Warder did a nice job. Uh, apparently was either suspecting that or was guarding very, very well because he made the save and, of course, got carried into the crease. So Syracuse loses possession. Ball ended up right on the Hobart doorstep. Their goal. Statesman out of the offensive zone. 2-0 game, heading to the 7.30 mark of the first quarter. Cable Maddox with it. Tim Watt, and the Statesman on a switch. You mentioned Kugavan, 6'2", 13, while Maddox is 5'8", 160. Lacrosse is one of the few sports where you don't have to be big, but when you get a matchup like that and you've got a 53-pound difference, it uh, it hurts. It is a disadvantage. Maddox, outstanding player, very quick. But when you're talking about that big of a weight differential, yeah. not a lot you can do. And the Statesman may have thrown it away. We'll see what kind of midfield play they can get as they that's off. That should be Hobart. For it. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be offsides, and uh, Syracuse will get it. Nice push. When you get up on that line, you can't get your foot over, but you can push somebody over legally. If they go over, it's still offsides, and that's exactly what Syracuse did. And Lockwood starts from out on top. Charlie already has a goal to his credit. Working inside. Good feed. Donovan. Donovan gets that shot off, and it bounces behind the net. Pusha, good hustle, gets there and uh, saves the ball. Syracuse gets another opportunity. Bill Warder, goaltender, able to avoid that Syracuse rush. Here's Barr, top of the box. Going to get a shot off and a score. The midfielder, John Barr, in his second game back from the suspension, played well Saturday against Browndale in his return. He had a couple of weeks off there, and obviously his game has not been affected too poorly. Watch how quick he gets the ball off. Just sidearm shot, and he just blisters the net. That's a real hard shot. You see it again. They're doubling the ball, and they couldn't get on his stick. Six and a half left now, first period. Syracuse leads 3-0 over Hobart. Statesmen are doing all they can to slow down the pace of this game and not get into a track meet with the Orange, but that's the last thing Coach O'Hara wants to see. We're going to get a hold call here, and that'll be against Hobart and uh, Coach, Coach O'Hara. Yeah. yeah, he's a, you could, that picture says it all. <laughs> but you're right, Dave, he does not want to have that going up and down, but he is, uh, he is doing good things. To, well, let's see, this could be Hobart's ball, it will be. Good hustle on the end line, Statesman defense. So they're gonna get the ball back. Mike Higgins running that one down, number yep. 41. Higgins very close, and uh, on a shot, those who are close to it, closest to it, I should say, when it goes out, get the ball, and that's what Hobart did. Statesman on the clear, Higgins on the near side with it. Matt Ryder is there to greet him. Good play, though, as they bring it to the offensive zone. Jeff King with it on the 34. Here's the patience, and the, that's what slows the game down a bit. And if nothing else, just keeps the score relatively close, at least till halftime, you want to stay in a game like this. Bobby Wynn, fresh off the bench. He's their face-off specialist. Good feed, nice bounce shot. shot. Put up by Watt, and that one bounces over the net. Tim Watt jumped out from uh, the crease, popped out. They got him the ball. He turned and fired, but uh, 
Syracuse very quickly gets to the ball and Saran will now handle it for Syracuse. As the count continues, 10 seconds to get it out of your goal area. Getting close, he gets over that part. Reggie Thorpe crosses midfield. We got 10 seconds to get it into the other goal area. Here's sophomore Mitty Roy Colsey with it. Again, has to work through a double team. This time doesn't make it through. You can see the whole bar strategy. Let's let's double team the ball, and if we get something, maybe we can get a fast break going the other way. They do, but Syracuse stops it momentarily. Beardsley back in, number 47, but he's no longer on Maddox. He's on number six, Zach Gino. It's a tough one, huh? Yeah, did I say that right? <laughs> I think you did. 440 and counting first period, three nothing game. Syracuse on top. Bobby Wynn, top of the box with it. Eric Watt had a shot a moment ago that just bounded over the cage. Dom Finn hacking at him. Crowd at number 47, back to Cable Maddox. Kugavin watching him. Maddox in front. Little nice. flick shot. What a play by Cable Maddox and a score. I don't think Kugavin ever realized he got a shot off. Well, you know, you can be outweighed by 53 pounds, but as you said, he's quick, and he might have even taken a little one-hand shot. Let's see. Here's Maddox, 14. He's protecting the stick. He almost got it hacked. Watch. Yes, he did. He one-handed that. He just put it down and, and low. Let's see from this angle. I could be wrong, but no, I'm not. Right under his arm with a one-hand shot, Dave, and uh, Saran not able to track it down. That's goal number one for Hobart. He is 9-8 and eight this year, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. Number one in scoring both departments for the Statesman this year. Hobart's having some problems on, uh, on face-offs with some penalties. Let's see if we... Paul Sutherland with it. SU up 3-1, heading into that face-off situation. Lockwood, good feed. Oh, he's got too much room. Oh, nice right. save. Made a nice save, though. Water was right there to stick it aside. Good defensive effort from the Statesman. Maybe they can use that goal for some momentum. Matt Ryder hacking from behind. Good effort. Got the ground ball too, but Hobart there to break it up again. They get the ball back. James Martin, good work with a long stick, number 28. Brett Leary controls. Watched by Sullivan, who's a midi. You hear that crack, you know what they're doing? They're checking sticks of the guys on the crease when they're saying, I'm open, I'm open. And as soon as that ball takes off, they're putting that aluminum on them and on the stick. Thorpe got a piece of that and then starts to break the Pusha. Oh! Good steal from behind. Excellent defensive work from Hobart again. That was Carter, 16. Nice job. Starts it the other way. Big Higgins stick. With a big stick now. Bring Save! It Great play. Crowder was right on top of Chris Saran. And they got a piece of that one heading in, and Hobart's going to turn it over. Syracuse brings the other way. Well, Chris so, ran up to the test early on. Just going to say, Dave, so far the strategy be, has been double-team the ball for Hobart, double-team the ball defensively. Let's get down, see if we can get a fast break. But Chris Saran gets his head into his job, and he saves that one with a face mask. The ball just going to be whistled in, and you see Syracuse... Chris Saran as they get the ball across. Barr has it, and they start their own fast break. Lockwood top of the box. Man, is he quick. Gets right by his man. Shot was broken up before it ever got to the cage. Excellent. Good effort. hustle. Let's what see who hey, kind of decision we're going to make. Carter, number 40, going for the dive. And he may have been the closest, too, as it hit the sideline. Coach Simmons watching on. We'll see what the call is. It's going to stay so Syracuse, Syracuse got ball, it. yeah. You can tell these players really... Putting out all the effort and emotion in this game. Bar behind the cage. He's wide open in front. It scores. Little deep move. Waited for the opening and put it in right behind Bill Warder. You don't really have to rip the net to score. And uh, you'll see why when you got some moves as Barr does, as Warder is now going to have to go one-on-one. -on -one. Up, up. Then he just takes a lot off it and uh, throws the change up in the hole. You're going to see it again from the low-level look, and you see not that hard a shot. All it's got to do is pass that little imaginary plane, and you got yourself a goal, and Syracuse got number four, and there are Barr's numbers for the year. Second goal of the night for John Barr. 2.20 and counting, first quarter. Syracuse now up 
four to one. Orangeman led. Three nothing after Barr's first goal. Fazy uh, with it. Fazy streaking in. Good oh. feed. Archer. Nice but he save. Stopped. He was stoned by Bill Warder, who is right up to the task, and he's excited. Warder save. trying to get his fellow defenseman jacked up. Save number four for Warder, not of the spectacular variety, as that was a one on one. Check it out. As Fazy sees open on the crease, hits Ryder, Ryder goes up and down, but he puts his knee, puts the leg down, and he jammed him right there. Good job by Warder. On the chain, Syracuse big stick in, Chad Smith, 43. Getting some playing time. You know, one of the things the fast break does, if it happens too quickly, you can't get your, your defensive midfield group in. Now, Syracuse was able to get them in, and right there we got another big stick, and they are really going after the ball. Krugerman and Chad Smith all over. Cable Maddox not even allowing him penetration as we're down to the 135 mark and counting. First period of play from the carry dome, 4-1. SU Lee, Tony Gray, number seven, controlling before he comes off. Statesman will want another switch. Brett Leary is in. He's got it. They'll let him get just so far, and then they'll go after him. Good feed, that shot over the cage. Mike Wynn, third string midfielder, number 45. Todd Burnham got the ball and back for Hobart. Watched by Rick Beardsley with a long stick. See, now they're doubling the ball as the sub was coming in, and Doyle's going to have to catch up with a man who just came out of the substitution area. Maddox behind the cage, being hammered by Kugavin. Trying to get off a shot, but just can't do it. Excellent SU defense, and Smith comes away with it. Reggie Thorpe lost it for a moment, trying to hit someone, and he just hit some air. <laughs> As we're down to 35 seconds in the quarter, a battle for it. Casey Donegan had a stick on it for a moment. Comes away to the orange. A lot of time. I'm sure they'll settle down as they get Dom Finn coming in the substitution area. Whitek is out. Finn comes back in. Colsey back onto the field. Fresh legs for the orange. 15 seconds and counting left in the quarter. Fietta in as well. Finn streaks in. Had that shot broken up before it got to the cage. Fietta retrieves. Donegan Five open. seconds. Oh. Casey Donegan scores with two seconds left. He was wide open, 10 feet in front of the cage, and Water had absolutely no chance. This is one of these deals. Watch. He knows he's open. Watch him. He's going to be asking for it. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Stays in the stick maybe a half a second, Dave, and he just turns and fires. And Warder's got that 36 square feet to defend there, six by six goal, and uh, he had no choice, actually no chance. And uh, goal number five in for Syracuse. Two seconds left in this first quarter. Stats on Casey Donegan this year, four and one. Seconds left in the period. And we are done with one quarter of play. As Jeff Schusler handled the face-off duties. Done with one from the carry dome, a 5-1 SU lead over the Statesman. Back with a second quarter after this. Back at the carry dome, beginning of the second quarter, a 5-1 Syracuse lead over Hobart. Goal so far for the Orange. Matt Ryder scored one. Charlie Lockwood unassisted. John Barr a couple. Cable Maddox one for Hobart. And Casey Donaghy with only two seconds to go. Kind of really hurts the spirits of a team like Hobart Dale. Just moments to go in the quarter, and you give up a really an easy goal like that. Well, you know, I think they've been playing aggressively, but sometimes they've had a little lapse there, and they had a lapse in allowing Donaghy to set up his Coleman lamp and everything right there on the crease. He, he was there for a Camp while. Out, huh? Yeah, he really, yeah, he had that uh, tent just about staked out before they uh, got the ball to him. John Barr, senior from Fairport, New York, just outside Rochester, showing little ill effects of his suspension. Violation of team rules, but now he is back and obviously a major contributor to the Orangemen. Underway now with the second quarter. Schusler handing faceoff duties after Fazy did well in the opening period. Nobody Fieta. seemed to come up with this one. Decking some people, and Thorpe. he'll come away with a ball after Reggie Thorpe scooped it. 6 1 SU faceoff advantage. Donegan, who scored a moment ago, inside. Fieta diving and scoring. 
Mark Fiena's first goal of the night. And the Orange have a 6-1 lead. Another guy from Elbridge. You know, you look at these schools, Jordan Elbridge, Reggie Thorpe, and Fiata, both from Jordan Elbridge, the little school, never used to have a lot of representation, but watch what this guy does. That's just a real nice shot by Fiata. That was real pretty, and you're gonna get another look at it. He gets the ball back after Donegan can get it in the air and uh, paid the price, but made the shot and got the goal. Again, little chance for Hobart goalie, Bill Warder. Mark 3-0 on the season, three points. Fuchsia comes away with see that the, momentarily. See, see all the, I'm just going to say, see all the orange jerseys there on the ball. They're getting it back. Now Beardsley's got it. He may take it up. Tries an AstroTurf pass. Fuchsia trying to regain possession. Reggie oh. Thorpe just lost a little uh, lack of communication yeah. between John Parr and Reggie Thorpe. You could see him say, yep. I didn't it's know yours. you were going to take it. Yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, Syracuse loses possession. Hobart brings it in. On Schmidt out there. First time he's seen some action. Big stick midfielder with the little brace on the knee. He's on win 25 as win gets rid of it. Michael Doyle out there as well for Syracuse. Kugavin, Beardsley, and Thorpe. The first team long sticker out there also. That shot a little bit wider than that from Bobby Wynn. So turn over to the orange. Jesse will try to clear it out. They get an opportunity to get their short and defensive stick, big stick off. And Saran's going to take it up. Look at them collapse on the ball. See, watch these guys collapse. They are going after the ball, trying to force a bad pass. They are very aggressive defensively. John Barr, a little give and go with Lockwood streaking in. Excellent feed inside. Casey Donegan, another goal. You know, if we can see this from the top, you can see a couple of things. What they did, they made a nice fake. It's an old Gate Brothers trick when they used to use a hidden ball, but you can watch what they fake a little move here. Watch. Watch Pina 22. Now he stays because he thinks the guy on the right's got the ball, but he does, but he gives it right back. They found themselves outnumbered. He makes the cross cage feed, and there's the score. But what happened was he got frozen in between, wasn't sure who had the ball, left his man open, and when he made the break, he was able to get the ball, then make the pass to Donegan. His second goal, 7-1 game, 13-35 and counting. Second quarter, Paul Sullivan. He had a lot of time when John Barr was out with suspension. Played very well. Streaking in, going to get a shot off on the run, a little bit wide. 8-1, SU face-off advantage, a big key. Hobart just can't get a possession. Last week, you know, uh, he started a, a great fast break for Syracuse. I'll talk about it in a second. We'll go right back to the live action. Fuchsia, top of the box. Donegan, been lighting it up. Already a couple of goals for him in this game. End of the first period, scored moments ago. Been a vital part of the SU offensive effort in this game so far. One guy we haven't seen involve a whole lot has been Archer, which is a bit of a surprise considering all the points he's amassed this season. He's the quarterback usually, yeah. and they, we, I just checked him. He is, he is behind, behind the cage, but Hobart's going to try to get, it may go out of bounds, it will. One of the things I was talking about Sullivan last week, number 21. He, he ran maybe 50 yards, he sprinted, knocked the ball down, picked it up, threw it back, started a fast break, ran back down and got on the offense. That's why, there he is right there. Great look at him. It's just a game where you have to be able to sprint and sprint and sprint, and boy, he's always there and always hustling, Char or Paul Sullivan. Maybe the big difference between Division One, Division Three, Dale, you, you get down to the bench, Syracuse can go 10, 15 guys deep where they have the players that have the incredible endurance and speed. That's a Pete Lasagna. Oh, watch. Good feed inside. Ryder with another goal. Nice left-handed feed by number nine, Fietta. Matt Ryder's second of the night. It's 8-1 now with 12.35 to go in the second. And you're going to see what Fietta, the sophomore from Jordan Elbridge, as he made the nice pass. There it is. And Ryder just takes the point blank left-handed shot, makes it 8-1. Matt Ryder has the last SU goal, scored the first of the night, back with 12.32 to go in the first quarter. Timeout for Hobart. Statesmen want to stop the clock and talk it over. And again, coming up on Super Sports, check your local listings for time of the Cornell-Syracuse game, another great traditional Central New York lacrosse rivalry. Richie Moran's big red against the Orange of Syracuse. And speaking of traditional Simmons, right. there's the younger. 
Roy the third. Uh, the three. And, yeah, Roy three, and uh, he's just uh, gotten a job in one of the local high schools, Jamesville DeWitt, so he is no longer coaching here. He's coaching there, however, at the uh, JV level. I was talking to his dad, and he said the guys from uh, James Hill DeWitt said, geez, you used to coach at Syracuse, and now you're here coaching JVs, but uh, they have a great program out there, Jim Pastillo, the head coach on the varsity, so he's working out and helping out with the JVs, so the Simmons tradition continues. Chris Saran, 5'11", 178-pound senior from Wilton, Connecticut, transfer. As we mentioned, a career-high 26 saves against Towson, 22 Saturday against Brown, and 25 on the road in that 14-13 overtime loss to Loyola. His concentration is almost beyond belief. Amazing. He's talking, had a super year. Talking to Rick Beardsley, and he said the man just is, is always on when he's on the lacrosse field. He's always ready to stop a shot. And uh, you know, they were up by eight or nine goals one time, and somebody took a shot. You need expect him to be maybe a little bit lazy, but he was right on it. And, uh, he just uh, epitomizes the ultimate goalie. Syracuse gets another faceoff. It's a nine to one Nine to in the face-off department. Dominating that department for sure. Donegan inside. Good feet. Colsey. Bounce shot and a score. Roy Colsey has a goal. Everyone getting into the scoring act tonight. And the Orange now lead 9-1 with 12-20 to go in the first half. That's what happens when you get the face-off. Uh, you're able to dictate what happens. You get a guy open the crease. They slide. Not able to get there in time. Munchell 11. Tried to get there, but it wasn't to be. So Colsey up with goal number 12 on the year. It was 1-0 against Brown. Sophomore Mitty, 5'11", 192 pounders. Syracuse has simply been getting just about every faceoff, 9 of 10 so far. Schuessler's done a nice job. Fazy did well in the first quarter. Schuessler's taken the last four faceoffs. Remember years ago, Hobart had a faceoff man, Tiny Crawford. About 5'8", 215 pounds. He, uh, he heard them up there one year, but uh, they're not getting any face-offs today. And uh, they will get this call, however, off a of Syracuse stick. And uh, Hobart will get possession as uh, Fotopoulos not able to keep the ball in, number 27. And uh, you're going to see a lot of new people out there, Dave. Chance for Coach Simmons to substitute with a big pad now, eight-goal lead. Hobart has got it. One goal tonight, Cable Maddox scored in the first period. And at that time, made it a 3-1 game. And SU has reeled off six consecutive. Tim Watt with it. We haven't mentioned these names much because Hobart simply hasn't had the ball in the offensive zone a whole lot. Here's Maddox on the far side. He's being shadowed by Kugavin all night long. Tim Watt. You Tony see, Gray. see all the breaks there, Dave. You see all the white shirts right on top of the orange. That's the whole idea. And of course, you know they're passing around the perimeter, but that's what you're waiting for. The ball's down. If you're Syracuse, you're after it. If you're Hobart, you say, okay, now maybe I can get a fast break. Mike Doyle nearly came up with it at midfield, Dale. Good pass in low. Penalty flag dropped on the far side. Slow whistle penalty, and looks like Askew's going to be whistled. Official Steve Miller is going to call the. Slash. So Syracuse be down a man for a minute. And this is the second man up opportunity, which is good for Syracuse. They, some games they've been on a five, six penalty pace at this time, but there's the uh, there's the slash. Doyle got a piece of the helmet on the way by, and there he is in the penalty box. Yep. They serve a minute. Statesman with another man up opportunity. Todd Burnham triggers play. Cable Maddox with it. The idea, of course, if you're Syracuse, is to fill in all the passing lanes with your stick because you're down a body. You've got to fill them up with your stick and shuffle and pick up men and hope that that happens right there, that they lose the ball. And they do. But now Syracuse will have the ball doubled because uh, they're going to have to clear it, and there's still a man down. Lockwood back on as the Orangemen change. Fresh legs in the field as they'll try to clear it out. Easily done by Thorpe. This ought to release right now. The release. Oh, I heard a whistle before they, they got there. Let's see what the offside. Like offside call. Yes, yeah. You got to have four guys in uh, your defensive area. Thorpe took a sightseeing tour, but uh, usually another midfielder will go back and stand and, and, and keep the fourth man, but uh, they lost it and uh, he got it all the way to the box, but they're still down a man. They ran some time off the clock. Don Burnham jogs it into the offensive zone. Watt, right-handed cradle. 
Eric Curry to Maddox. First line, middies and attackmen on the field for Hobart trying to get back into the game, whatever they can do. Maddox simply has not been free. Burnham never got there. Chad Smith hammering him on the far side, but a flag can be thrown and another penalty coming up against Syracuse. Boy, Smith, very physical play against Maddox and against Burnham on the far side. Burnham went right down. Yeah, he went directly down, and uh, this is Chad Smith. He's a transfer from Army, and he actually cross-checked him there. Uh, you can't do that, right? You can't. If you had both hands down, and you know the knockdown isn't anything because there's body contact in lacrosse, but you can't do it with your stick. If he had both his hands together and lambasted him, then that would have been okay. As it stands, it's a penalty, and I'm not sure was the other one released or not. Let me count: one, two, three, four, five, six. They are down. One man must have gotten the other one released. Just down one. Hobart 0 for 2 so far. They're man ups. Trying desperately to get back in the game. Maddox, good feed inside, but it was broken up as he tried to get it to Zaccanino. Beardsley did a nice job of checking the stick of Zaccanino. Nice hit. Doyle, who just was penalized moments ago for going to the helmet, gets knocked down himself. Here's Beardsley. He'll take a shot. Oh, he'd love to yeah. score. Oh, the loses the game. ball. There's not much more that brings the crowd to its feet than a defense with a long stick or a defensive midi or a goalie, especially That's right, scoring. goalie. <laughs> goalie, they run out there and the defenseman, you know, they're pasting bullseyes on him when he gets out. <laughs> oh, they get a break on the goal. Nice. Going in there, and that shot just deflected wide. Tony Gray had a break toward Chris Saran. Oh, they're going to call a push. And a push against SU. Yeah, they thought that uh, he might be in there, but uh, you, you can push him legally into the crease, and you're going to watch Tom Gray. There's the shot. There's the push. It was from behind. That was a good call. That was a good call. Now they're counting people to make sure everybody's in, and uh, Syracuse, I think, even strength, man-to-man -man defense. the attack. Curry. Cable Maddox. 9 0 9 and counting left in the first oh. period. Another slow whistle has come up against Syracuse again. Physical play in the crease. Beardsley's going to be down. Yeah. Beardsley's going to be in the hole. Down again. Oh, and after the whistle, we're going to get another penalty as Reggie Thorpe cross-checked a Hobart player, and it's going to take a while, Dale, to sort this one out. All right, I'll tell you what it's, it's going to be. be. It's going to be Beardsley on a hold for 30 seconds. It's going to be Thorpe with unnecessary roughness for a minute. I'm guessing. Let's see. We'll watch it from here. There's Kugavan. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Still pushing. Now the ball's down. There's the behind-the-back shot. Well, that's the shot right there that's going to cost you. Let's see what we get. Let's White listen. He's got interference, technical 30 seconds. Well, that was the hold I said. White got one minute for a Okay. Same thing. It's a minute and a half. They could have called a hold. They could have called unnecessary. It all amounts to the same thing. Syracuse is down two men. And at least for 30 seconds, unless they can get the ball down on the other end and release them. So now they really have to box it up. You gotta, you gotta have a box, four guys out in front of the goalie, and they slide from point to point on the box with the sticks up to try to prevent a shot. If you can stop somebody when you're two men down, you should get uh, a medal. That's uh, Burn on Smith the offensive end. defensively for Syracuse with a big stick. Hans Schmidt, 44. Two men down. We'll see if Syracuse can get by this one. Watt winds and scores from the top of the box. Tim Watt. 5-980 pounder from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Senior came in with five goals. Give him six now for the year. Watch what the bodies do as they really open up. When he turns to fire, there's a lane in there because there just aren't enough. There's two guys that should be in there, and, and you're not going to have them, and you see the net rip. Watch it from this angle. You get a better idea of what I mean. See that? See how clear that was? And uh, Saran, again, very difficult. People say, well, gee, he saw him. Why couldn't he stop it? You get a ball going that fast, it's like a little pill going in there, and uh, Saran tried to get it but could not. Syracuse going to take a timeout. Settle themselves down after two man down situation. 8.28 to go in the first half. 9 2 SU on top. Seven goal cushion. Tim Watts' goal, the two man up with 8.28 to go, is the first since Cable Maddox scored back in the first quarter. 
Any comments, questions about our programming here at Super Sports, please write us. Care of Adelphia Cable, 500 South Salina, downtown. Syracuse, New York, 13202 is the zip. Young fans enjoying this one. <laughs> Future SU star, maybe a Hobart star. That's could right, be from could Geneva, be. That's right. West of, of the city, it's possible. Got the mouthpiece already. Oh, I know that. I knew she'd take it out <laughs> take of there. Take it out of You're there. You're on TV. Give me that thing. <laughs> Cute little guy. <laughs> Great face. Yep. Start them early here. And Syracuse has taken that time out. They had, you know, four different guys were down. They had uh, two penalties or four penalties, but two were served with both guys at the same time. But all of a sudden, we went from not having any penalties to bodies all over the place. But when you have people on the crease open, you saw what Thorpe did. Uh, it, it, the, the idea is you clean them off no matter how you do it. If you get a penalty, you get a penalty. But you don't want to give up an easy goal. So uh, I had talked to the coaches about the penalties, and they, they said, you know, you don't want to tell a team, look, you guys are, are going too aggressive because then sometimes they'll lay off. So what they try to do is uh, strike a happy medium. And uh, right now it's uh, gotten back to that aggressive play we've seen earlier this season. Yeah, we mentioned that Hobart has had such trouble with faceoffs. Derek Vanderwerker, number 32, is going to give it a try against Puccia for Syracuse. Sometimes a different face uh, give you a faceoff, and yeah, it worked it. there. The third faceoff win of the night. Not out of this game by any means. Absolutely not. Beardsley just uh, took it away from Zaccanino. Great effort by Zach Rick Beardsley, who's yeah. double teamed, but somehow gets it off to Kugavin. And Puchier into the offensive end now for SU. Casey Donegan for two goals first half so far. It's been a good break, probably, for Bill Warder. Hasn't seen a shot the last few moments, giving him a chance to take a breather. Donegan streaking inside, couldn't quite get the shot off. Good feed to Ryder, who has two goals tonight. Donegan, Archer, bouncer. Good stop by Warder in front. Starts the break the other way. And Hobart, just like that, throws it away. Tough turnover. Statesman bench kind of let down after that one was over the cross. Number 26, Dan Goodwin, uh, unable to handle. Well, that's the thing that hurts you when you get a, against a team like Syracuse. You only have so many opportunities. And when you got a fast break opportunity, you got to cash in on it. At least get an opportunity to take a shot. As you said, they threw the ball away, and, and that, that's the kind of thing that you can't have happen against a team like Syracuse. Tusha brings it across. Team. Yep. Down by seven. 7.30 and counting. First half in the Carrier Dome. Charlie Lockwood. Great burst of speed, had a knock out of his cross from behind. Good defensive effort. John Barr has scored a couple times tonight. Donegan working well with some first string middies and attackmen. O'Connor on him on the far side. Trying to clear Barr. through, yeah, tried to get the pass to Barr and Pusha couldn't quite handle, comes away to Hobart. Ned Andrews, number 44, across midfield, but hit from behind by Puscher. Good defensive effort. Kugovin came up with it back to Andy, and he'll bring it into the offensive zone for SU. Syracuse has numbers. Ryder pushed out of the crease area. O'Connor just oh. hammered him. No call. The Ryder's going to try to get back at him, diving and scoring that Ryder. What an effort. The senior try captain from Homer has another goal. It's a 10 2 SU lead with 6.37 left in the first half. O'Connor 6 3, 2 10, and you can see why right here. Watch that push. Whoa! You know, that's like a sailor trying to find the gangplane after Liberty there. He really had him going, but then he just comes back, takes him inside, he takes a little bit of a nudge on the head, and uh, that's the best way to answer. Matt Ryder has a hat trick already. Had a big effort, was 5-1 and one against Brown. Hobart coming back a bit in the face-off department. Vanderwerker tries it for the statesman O'Connor. Working against Fazio is back in there. Puccia had taken some. Schusler had taken some for SU. And now Bob Fazio, the first-line face-off specialist, back in there. SU in the offensive end. Great feed in front. Colsey's he's got a goal. Roy Colsey is second of the night, and Syracuse now leads 11-2 with 6.16 left in the first half. Matt Doyle, 29, makes the nice look, right? 
He draws the second man, comes across. That means somebody, that's a great look right there. You can see exactly what happens. When they double team, you got two choices. You can bring the stick down and try to gut it out, or you can make the pass as quickly as he did and get Colsey the second goal. Nice Orange job. Now the nine goal lead. And a seven faceoff advantage. Vander Worker. Look at Doyle, by the way, only a freshman. Right, he's a youngster. Coach Simmons has told us very impressed with Matt Doyle's work ethic and talent level. A name to remember. Tim Watt has one of the two Hobart goals so far. Bobby Wynn, number 25 out there. Midfielder handled a lot of the faceoffs early in this game. Just unable to get high percentage shots off. That's been the story. But Watt, as I say that, walks in and was stone in front. Excellent defensive work. Came away to Thorpe. And Dom Finn now brings in for SU. Had Doyle open to the right of the cage. Very physical play. Calls in Donegan. One of the smallest players out there really laying a body on someone. Good effort on the far side from Hobart. Higgins just diving. Well, you can't uh, fault the effort. Higgins did a great job there. He went airborne, and, you know, when you come down on this turf, it's not a pleasant <laughs> sensation on your knees and elbows. Without knee pads especially. Elbow right. Elbow pads. They've got the elbow pads working, but did a real turf burn there. 22-11 shot advantage, and Coach O'Hara, if he looks at the stat sheet, if he's the kind of coach that does that at halftime, he's really going to have to evaluate Based on that, glowing stat for Syracuse. That one skips through the crease area. Turnover to Hobart. 5-14 left, first half. 11-2 game. SU, a nine-goal cushion. You look at saves. Uh, Saran, only three saves. And uh, 11 shots, as you mentioned, for the Statesman. None, no saves this quarter for Saran. Has not really been challenged. He got... Just the shot before this was a nice shot on goal, but ball down here. Fotopoulos making life really hard for Bobby Wynn, who then retaliates against Colsey. Here's Reggie Thorpe with a long stick. Thorpe will stay in with the offense for a while until they tell him to run out. There he goes. You see him check out and bring a short stick back on across. Probably be Colsey. It is indeed Roy Colsey. Dom Finn top of the box will set the play. Fieta Colsey out there. Oh, lost Don the ball. Finn. Good work, though, by Bobby Wynn. The midfielder is one of their spe face-off specialists. And now a retaliation penalty is going to be called against Tom Finn. May have a slash. And another penalty flag drops as Roy Colsey on the far side. Play going out of bounds. Just leveled Jeff King, a second-line midi for Hobart. There's, uh, there's the little slash right there. Or he might give him a hold. But now there's the there's the shot right there. Not not so blatant, but obviously penalized. Let's see. Yeah, I knew they'd give him a hold on that. Yeah, okay. So Syracuse down two men again. Again. They seem to do it in twos. What that the third time, I think. That's uh tough situation and Syracuse will box it up again. You'll see him in the box. Four guys, each guy in a corner. And Saran, the last line of defense. And uh, they've had one man up goal. This is their sixth opportunity, so they're one of five at this point. Tony Gray, Watt had a goal in the last two man up situation. Gray took his eye off it for a moment. And saves to his teammate, Zach Anino. Hobart on the man up, throw it away again. Cable Maddox just tried to streak in before he had the ball in his cross. And SU takes over. Now that's the thing, you know, it doesn't make any difference Division One, Division Three. There's nobody there, you missed the pass. That's the, you know, and that's uh, the things that drive a coach like B.J. O'Hara crazy. Rick Beardsley. They should double the ball. Yeah, they will. They'll, they'll get on Beardsley, and then Beardsley will. Speed, though. Such a great stick handler. Spin move. Does the job. There's Dom Finn. Now Dom Finn is out, actually. Out there for SU, number 25, Steve Aaron's getting some playing time. And win. Uh, and there's Bobby Wynn coming off. Yeah, they, they're going to get the ball. Hobart will have the ball. Fans wanted to push. Wynn was involved. Let's check it out. And you know Syracuse is down. Uh, close call. But it goes Hobart way. 
Coach Simmons watching his team with a nine goal lead as we wind down in the first half, 320 and counting. SU up 11 2. Curry with it. To the left of the king, that's Gray, top of the box. Feed to Maddox. Try to get it to Curry off his cross. He's going to go to midfield. We'll see who can battle for it. Huh. Comes away to the Orangeman. Coming in alone. Syracuse, another shot and a score. Doyle's going to get it. The freshman has got his first goal tonight. 12 2 game with 3.01 left. Matt Doyle and Mike Doyle. There's the pass. Shot. Just powered it by him. So Matt Doyle, 29, gets a goal. Fourth goal, three assists. He's got seven points so far through the 93 season. James Martin, number 28, with a long stick, the sophomore from Massapequa Park down in the Long Island area, unable to catch up with Doyle. And SU will try to win its 11th. Face off. Seven man up opportunities for Hobart, none for Syracuse at this point. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you, Dave. That's what happens with very physical play. That's been a trademark of Syracuse this year, I think more so than the years past. Very aggressive. Aaron's had to go right off his cross. That's going to go out of bounds, and Hobart will get it with 2.45 to go in the first half. Syracuse has always been an aggressive team, but they have, uh, they really go after it, and uh, that's one of their trademarks. I think that's why they're so successful. DJ O'Hara grimaces a bit. Team trailing by 10 goals. There's the ground ball stat we haven't seen. 27 22, pretty even. A lot of loose balls. Yeah, sometimes misleading statistic, and there's a misleading. Uh, that's a pass, and he really misled <laughs> he him misled on that. Yeah. Everyone on that one. Yeah. BJ's reaction. Right. Saying, what in the world was that? Again, not a not a Division three, Division one, just a poor pass. You know, they make them at all levels. And uh, those are things that, you know, hey, look, if we get beat by somebody because he's faster or better, that's one thing. But when you just throw the ball, but BJ's talking to him, and uh, you notice his tact is uh, very, very low key, and they will be contending, you can bet, for the Division Three National Championship. You're going to get a look at this from the end zone. Syracuse possession, Fred Amaya out there. He's a former starter, senior. Had Donigan wide open, turn and fire. Loose ball in front. Comes away to Higgins of Hobart, and in and looks out. like an in and out violation call against the Statesman. Yeah, Higgins Syracuse uh, gets it. cannot go in there with possession, with the ball in your possession, and the defenseman can pick it up. He can even go in, but you can't go in and come back out, or go out and go back in, I should say. So Syracuse uh, gets the ball back. Freddie Amaya with it, left-handed cradle. Jim Morrissey out there getting some playing time. Roy Simmons using a lot of bodies. We're in a midweek game, so wants to make sure it keeps everyone fresh for Saturday's game against Cornell. And they're doubling the ball and putting the pressure on. Nice job by Hobart. Higgins closest to it on the far side. Good effort by Paul Sullivan who's trying to climb over him and get to it. Here comes Paul off the field. Dale mentioned earlier. Excellent hustle exhibited all game long. We're to the last moments of the game, and he's still playing hard. Yep. Higgins triggers play. Under two minutes. First half, Orange lead by 10, 12-2. O'Connor with a long stick. Little shuffle pass. Nice one. Ahead to Jeff King. You hear him saying pick, Reggie. They were trying to pick off Reggie Thorpe and uh, he went right through with it. It's man to man. You see all those orange jerseys and a white one right with it. That's the Cable Maddox being hounded by Kugman. King got a shot off but Saran gets a piece on the way. Saran to Beardsley. <laughs> Syracuse breaks out. Saran going out with him for a few steps to make sure it's cleared out of the defensive zone. Heading down to the one minute mark, first half. Nice job there getting somebody on sides and bringing in Toby Price out there. Yeah, now. just going to look at Toby Price. So, all kinds of guys getting playing time in this game. Also, out for the first time, Nick Licamelli, senior from West Genesee High School, 37. He tried to feed in front, Donigan, only five foot seven. If he had been a six footer, he probably would have come up with that. Had to go up the ladder. <laughs> right. There's Nick Licomelli coming off from Camillus. Five lousy inches, right? 
Hobart a chance for a final rush and maybe a goal. Get some momentum heading into the second half. They could use it. Good anticipation defense. O'Connor trying to come up with a good stick work in his defensive zone. Here comes Tony Gray. State's been trying to make it happen down the stretch. Matt Crowther is out there, 47. He's wearing a knee brace on his left knee. Bobby Wynn, top of the box. 13 seconds and counting now. Good defense by SU. Beardsley had a cross on it for a moment before he lost his stick. And that's going to do it. Hobart unable to control. And the Syracuse fans elated at what they've seen so far through 30 minutes of play at the Carrier Dome. Orangeman lead in the Central New York rivalry. 12-2 score. We're back after this. Syracuse up 12-2 over Hobart. The Orangemen dominating in this game. They've gotten goals from just about everyone. Fietta has done well. Matt Ryder has a couple of goals. He's got three. Colsey, two. And even Casey Donegan has chipped in with a couple. 12-2 halftime score. We're back with more right after this from the Carrier Dome. Welcome back to the Carry Dome, everybody. 12-2 score. The Orangemen over Hobart. This is Dave Ryan alongside Dale Drypolcher. Orangemen pretty much dominant in this game, Dale. 12-2 score. And that's not just on the scoreboard really indicative of what's going on out there. Physical play in really every phase of the game, they've been right there. Yeah, you and I were talking. It's really hard to come up with one story except the fact Syracuse just this, they did not overlook Hobart. They're just going out and playing a real tough lacrosse game, and, uh, and Hobart's uh, on the short end of it right now. One of the plays indicative of that certainly has been transition. Syracuse able to really thwart any kind of attack that Hobart has thrown at them, and the Orangemen have uh, been able to avoid the tough shots on Chris Rand. He's made a couple of saves, but really hasn't been tested. Absolutely, and, and yet on the other hand, they've been able to take the transition game. Ball's been down. They're knocking people down, coming up with the ball and going the other way. All right, we'll check out that play uh, that we're talking about. And in the end, Matt Doyle is going to get himself a goal. And here's an excellent example of the inability of Hobart to really penetrate. Hobart tried to cross cage. They get the pass, but they lose the handle on it. Syracuse starts it the other way. And you're going to see Doyle, watch, well, right there on the defensive end, they try to get the ball back. But uh, Mike Doyle comes up with it. Now he looks right away, number 29, Matt Doyle. And Doyle just beats the defenseman in. And nice overhand shot. Warder, who's been had some tough saves, not able to come up with that one. But that's pretty indicative of what's happened. Syracuse knocks the ball down. They come up with the transition. They find an open man. The open man finds another open man. They score a goal. They've really looked good tonight. 12-2, one number we're talking about, and a lot of other numbers to look at. The halftime stats, Syracuse just about there, exactly where they want to be in every stat so far tonight. Yeah, they've got them uh, outshot 24-12, which obviously is good. Ground balls, not really a telling statistic tonight, 28-23 in favor of Syracuse. Clear, Syracuse has cleared the ball. There's that transition, get the ball back down, get it up, and uh, save 7-4. Neither goalie uh, had to really come up with a lot of saves, but uh, they've really, uh, both guys have played well, I think. All right, Orange been up 12-2. We are set for face-off and second-half action right after this from the Dome. Stay with us. Syracuse with a 10-goal lead as we are just about set to start period number three. The Orange been over Hobart. And a good crowd on hand tonight, always dating back to the years. When this rivalry just started, excellent crowds. You have the folks coming from Geneva, east of Syracuse, about an hour drive or so, and enjoying perfect conditions inside the Dome tonight. Aren't they always? And the fans, well behaved. I've, <laughs> they've had some great. They've had some great uh, rivalry that uh, up at Hobart. They've had some good things. A little movement there. That's going to cost a face-off. Syracuse should get that. Pusha, Pusha, and Bobby Wynn battling. He'll take it. Are they going to? Yeah. There you go. SU starts off. Speaking of routed crowds, last year at Geneva, Boswell Field was quite a wild display of crowd reaction. Syracuse came away with a four-goal win, a lot of mud. Bettinger driving. Nearly got an excellent shot off there, wide of the cage. I want to point out that Jim Gracie, new goaltender, is in there. He's yep. logged 130 minutes, allowed 30 goals, and saved 41 so far. And there's a look at Jim, number 31. 
Sophomore, 5'8", 240 they list him at. That's a, that's a good sized goalie. He fills up a little more of that 36 square feet than Warder did. <laughs> Warder started off well, but it's awfully tough. His defense just couldn't hold. Yeah, you don't Syracuse's want to leave him. Potent attack. You don't want to leave him in there and let him let him take abuse for another half and uh, physical play in front and a violation is going to be called against Syracuse. Turnover to Hobart. I think it was a pick. Let's see what happens. Ball down. And uh, there's, oh, there's a push. Just a push. <laughs> just. That's a good definition of a push. Tonight, that's an excellent description. Right. There's been a, a lot of physical play. Watt into the offensive zone. Nice clearing pass from the goaltender on that play. Absolutely. Watt has one of the two goals. Cable Maddox the other. He's their scoring throw, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, but simply has not been able to get free for any kind of high percentage shots or even passing inside. Really, when he gets close to the goal, he's just mugged by a couple of SU defenders. Same. Size one there to win. That's broken up. Good SU defense. Lockwood streaking ahead. Just going to say the same situation we showed in the highlights. Bettinger in front. Scores. Steve Bettinger. Good low high move as he faked out the brand new goalie, Jim Gracie, and gets a score. It's 13 to Syracuse. Now this is the same thing we talked about just a couple of seconds ago. Ball down. Syracuse able to find an open man. He finds an open man. And Bettinger goes high on Gracie. And uh, goal number 13 for Syracuse as that has been the story. The transition game, the ability to pick it up and go. And when Hobart's had opportunities, Dave, sometimes they've thrown them away and they've not been able to get a good shot off every time. And part of the problem for Hobart is the faceoff situation. 12 and four, a lot of the fast breaks start right from the faceoff. Vander Worker replaces win on faceoff this time and he wins it for Hobart. Todd Burnham. Triggers offensive play for the Statesman. Now down by 11 huh. goals. Rick Beardsley, good stick work, but he trips, loses his stick at the end. Oh, and a hit put on. Burnham went down. You can hear Chris Saran screaming there <laughs> as Reggie Thorpe just crushed Todd Burnham. <laughs> Man, what a hit. People say, you know, is there any body contact in lacrosse? I see a lot of sticks and stuff, but do you ever get hit often? I mean, if the ball's down, can somebody just come over and run a whole big long distance and hit you like that? And they absolutely can. <laughs> he lined him up in the scope and yep. hit the bullseye on that one. <laughs> Burnham had no idea it was coming. Oh, boy. And he may not know where he is right now. Geneva or Syracuse. Orangeman in the offensive zone. Offside Sieta. against, uh, should be offside, I believe, against Hobart. That'll be technical, and, and Syracuse will get uh, 30 seconds uh, for a, a man-up opportunity for number one. 13.04 left in the second, third quarter, I should say, and Syracuse gets their first man-up opportunity. They've given up several, and one goal and two man-down situation in the second quarter. Yeah, they've given up seven, seven for one. That's about, uh, that's about <laughs> usual. <laughs> but it hasn't hurt them too much. That's you now on the man-up. Technical violation, 30 seconds on that offside call. Jamie Archer had that one stripped momentarily, but Lockwood recovers. Good pass, down low, shot and a score. And another goal for Matt Ryder, his fourth of the night. Syracuse leads at 14-2, 12-47 now left in the third quarter. That's Lockwood, uh, nice pass. There's the look right across the crease. It's very difficult when you're man down, and uh, Syracuse just did exactly what you're supposed to do. Found a man on the crease, all alone and uncovered. Matt Ryder's fourth of the night, as we mentioned, against Brown Saturday had five. Tenth all-time leading score in Syracuse University history. That was five goals last week, a season high for any SU player. Freddie Amaya comes away with that one off the faceoff. O'Connor racing, trying to catch him. Steve Bettinger in there. And Jim Gracie has got to feel kind of lonely now. Coming in to replace Water after one half a play. He's seen a couple of shots and they've both gone by him. Bettinger driving in again. Syracuse relentless with a pressure. Great fee went to Ryder, went off the post, but a rebound and a score from Sullivan. Hit the pipe on the first shot, but Paul Sullivan there to scoop up the loose ball and put it home. Harsman now have a 13-goal lead at 15-2 with 12-14 left in the third. I was going to mention Archer had been kind of quiet, but he started this one off. I don't think he'll get an assist on that, but 
He was always looking. Watch Archer. There he is. Quick pass. Popped it. There's the rebound. That's why it's very difficult. If you lose the rebound, the goalie's got to turn, try to find it. And Sullivan found it first and the goal. I'm checking the man down now. Syracuse, 42 opportunities. They've stopped 35 of 42 man down opportunities. They are tremendous, tremendous uh, effort. And uh, covering the ball from play, it's going to go uh, Syracuse way. So another face off. 14 to 5 now in that department. Sullivan scoops the ground ball. He'll trigger play after scoring the goal a couple of moments ago. Matt Ryder, good spin move, loses his man, already creating the advantage. Sullivan up top with a shot. And Gracie finally gets a cross on it. It's got to feel good for him, and then the outlet too high for his man. Thorpe diving on the far side. That's got to be good, too, for the younger players, Dale, to see a guy like Reggie Thorpe. He's a senior. Doesn't have to prove a lot. He knows he's going to be in the lineup. His team's up by 13 in the second half, and he's still full extension diving for a loose ball. Very intense. He's a, a wrestler also in high school, right. and uh, those guys always seem to be really intense, and uh, he goes all out all the time. 6'1", 203 pound senior from J.E. Here's King, watched by Smith with a long stick. Hobart just has not had any offensive flow in this game. Oh. Great shot out front from Burnham, though. Todd Burnham got free, and a leaping laser beam right by Chris Saran. So as I'm saying, Hobart can't generate offense. They get a free shot, and Todd Burnham takes advantage. Good point. They got a free shot. They got Beardsley got hung up with Saran. Saran came out, and he could not get back. Watch right here. Here's the pass. It was a nice look as he beat. He's coming around. Beardsley got hung up. I'm just trying to check who got the assist on that for Hobart. Burnham got the goal. I'm not sure whether it was win or not. No assist on that, I guess. So Watt facing off against Fazy for Syracuse. That stops a, a face six off. goal run from the Orangemen. O'Connor had a cross on it. Fred Amaya in there hitting people. As is Bob Fazy. Sullivan trying to take off some heads down low. Comes oh. away to Kukovan recovered. Cable Maddox. And man, is Fred Amaya laying people out. Fred Amaya went through two Hobart players. Todd Burnham really had his bell rung. Cable Maddox before that. Look at the physical play. There's a, there's a push, and the boy, he, he cannot get his legs. He says, I just got to get rid of the ball. And then Maddox he puts Dang. his head down to pick it up, and uh, he gets clobbered. Fred Amaya hammered him. Kugavin watching intently on defense. They called interference on that to give him the ball back, so I'm just checking to see what uh, Hobart's going to be able to do now. A little confidence, maybe? They jump from the crease. They could use it. Really struggling in this game. Syracuse, good effort from Thorpe in the crease. Reggie with a right-handed cradle is going to cross midfield, bring all the way himself. Maybe he'll shoot it. He had a little give-and-go work, and he's toward the crease now. Sullivan gets a shot off, went behind the cage. Higgins trying for Hobart. Good effort by Sullivan. Uh, Steve Bettinger to recover for Syracuse. Here's Fazy. Ryder loses Ryder it. lost it. Rarity there. You almost never see that. Ryder shaking up a bit. Slow whistle penalty is called. It's going to go against Syracuse. That'll be a slash on Ryder. His Ryder frustration after losing the ball out of his cross is going to sit down for a minute. Man up coming up for Hobart, trailing by 12 goals. Man up number eight. We're going to see Ryder. See, so loses it right there. And now he's a little frustrated. He's going to go after it, but ooh, you can't get anything but the stick if you're going to do a one-hand check. And he didn't get anything but his helmet <laughs> and his shoulder pad. He got a lot of helmet there, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, he sure did. Whacked him. Cleaved him. <laughs> so it'll be uh, down a minute. Number eight for Syracuse. Ryder sits. Tony Gray starts play. Cable Maddox, number 14, behind the cage. Watt was one of the goals. One of seven. Bobby Wynn out there. Gray tries to feed it inside. It's broken up. Smith. Big Chad stick, Smith Smitty. with a big stick. 
Mike Doyle, defensive midfielder with a short stick. Look at the checking work from behind before he lost his stick. Now it's an unsettled situation with an extra man. Let's see what they do. Maddox feeds to Gray inside, shoots and scores. Tony Gray, number seven. The senior from Hogansburg, New York, gets a goal. Seventh of the year for Tony Gray, midfielder. That's going to be one minute on a cross check or unnecessary roughness. Illegal check. We'll see it. There's the right there on the head, and then there's Man. the check. There's the check right there. Thorpe and, and Thorpe then and Beardsley. Beardsley. And then Beardsley. So Syracuse will be down again. And uh, this will be man up opportunity number nine. So I said earlier they were being good. Now they have crept back up, heading for double figures in the penalty department. Time served. There's Tony Gray. Stats on the 93 season thus far. Hobart came in with a 2 and 1 record, lost their game at Notre Dame. 15 14 in overtime, beat Ithaca, a game at Cornell. I was kind of shocked Cornell. about the Notre Dame. I mean, Notre yeah. Dame, uh, you know, re relatively new to the ranks, uh, but uh, obviously doing a good job in South Bend. Hobart, kind of a benchmark, got to be a big boost for their program. Two for eight in the man up. Gray just scored a couple of moments ago, Burnham has been completely knocked out in this game. Boy, he's been on the carry dome turf more than up. Gray loses it for a moment. Smith, good work with a long stick. Good hustle by Chad Smith. Tony Gray knew he was going to get hit by Kugavin. And some pushing and shoving, and we may have a double penalty coming up. Three penalty flags are down. And we're going to sort out this mess. You know, there's a bit of bad blood between these schools as Coach Simmons watches on. A lot of rivalry, very intense. Uh, we might be able to figure this. They may have done double penalty on that. And uh, at least one unsportsmanlike penalty. Steve Miller, Jake Curran, the officials right there. Jake Curran, he's going to come over and make the. Uh, Which means uh, those penalties will not release no matter what happens. So. There you have it. All right. Chad Smith for SU. Tim Watt goes down for Hobart, number 19, B.J. O'Hara. Watches the simultaneous penalty call. So no matter what happens, there will be no release on that unless the, you know, if there was different time, one was 30 and one was a minute, then it would be at least the, the 30 second. But on this one, both of them down for a minute. So what will happen is no team will have an advantage, i.e. a man advantage, but they'll definitely make the field a little more wide open. Now the Syracuse have two. Let's check now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Syracuse is down two men, I think. Yes, they're still down two men, so Look that penalty, penalty occurred. Yeah. Ten penalties for Syracuse in this game. Nine minutes they've logged. Down at least a man. Now they can get the first penalty out. Now if Beardsley gets in there, now Beardsley does, that should release the first penalty. So now they're only, now they're even. They're both down a man. Lockwood comes on. Beardsley. <laughs> Whistler shot there wide of the cage. Gracie. Didn't even see that one. Went by him, but... Luckily for Hobart, wide of the cage. Teams are at even strength, nine men apiece. They're both down a man, and they released the first penalty when uh, Beardsley got it into the goal area, but now it, uh, it does open things up a bit, Dave. It's not quite as crowded out there with two fewer bodies out there. Maybe a little bit less physical play, more finesse. We'll see. O'Connor to clear. Matt Ryder all over him. Syracuse's aggressive ride defense. Oh, see, they trapped him over there. They're a double team on the far side. Archer there as well, and they have a turnover. Procedure against Hobart. Great defense from Syracuse. See how they aggressively went after that ball. See, there he is on the side there. Now, Archer comes over, and they're all over it. Nice Barr move by Barr. Syracuse. Ryder on the far side, left-handed shot this time, turned around, it was sticked aside before it got there. Connor will dig it up for Hobart on the far side. Here comes Tony Gray with a full head of steam. Oh, tough to, tough to beat, laser lock Air with ball. the race. Cable Maddox took a swipe at Kugavin. Lockwood wasn't looking no. for that pass. Kugavin tried to pass, this is, this is great. 
I think you, you need a lung transplant when this little series is done. Statesman the other way. 7.30 left, third quarter, 15-4 game. They even up now? I think they're, yeah, I think we're all even. I know there's anybody in the box anymore, so now we're still even up at full strength. Brett Larry in, number 13. Mike Wynn out there, 45. He's a second line midi. Larry with a left handed cradle. Brian Reel seeing some time, number 27 also. Todd Burnham. Peter Linkwip also getting some more playing time. Look at Kugavan just Kugavan driving him in the ground. Harassing Cable Maddox. And oh, Maddox boy, talking it. to the official, but he's not going to get any sympathy. Brian Reel to Burnham. Watched by Linkflip. Six twenty and counting now. Third quarter. Syracuse still with an eleven goal edge. This is what Hobart was doing earlier in the game, Dale, and it proved effective when the game is tight. But when you're down by eleven, well, I think you want to, you know, you want to run your offense. You're going to have to play other games besides Syracuse. And true, you know, that's the thing. They just want to keep. Boy, he's going to get ease. There, he just can't get a shot off. Loose in front, shot and a goal. Right place at the right time, and Hobart gets one. Eric nice Curry, Curry there, yep. number ten. First goal of the night for him, it's 15-5. Coach Simmons likes him out of Auburn, New York, and the Curry in the right place. See him sneak from behind there? And then he gets the shot. I didn't even see him get the ball there, but uh, let's check it again. There's the, here's the push, the look. Oh, you see that? It looked like the man in front had the ball. I was fooled, and I was up here watching it on a replay. You can imagine what the goalie had to go through. <laughs> Fazy against Wynn. Pushed by O'Connor against Dom Finn off that faceoff, and Syracuse should get possession. Finn a bit shaken up, a little bit of a limp there. He went down hard. And there's only 5.57 left in the third quarter. <laughs> this game is uh, second half, going a little longer than I had thought. A lot of penalties, a lot of discussion. At any rate, uh, Syracuse still has a 10 goal lead. Hobart gets possession. Bobby Wynn starts out play. Watt out there as well. He appears to be limping a bit. He's got one of the Hobart goals tonight. Curry scored moments ago out there. Right place at the right time for him. Ball came right into his cross out of midair. Maddox driving, trying to get a shot off. Inside for Gray who scores. Tony Gray, another goal. Yeah, they managed to get the ball into Gray on the crease. Number seven, Thorpe was on him. Let's see what happened. There's Kugavan and Maddox. He just kind of one-hands it. Oh, Thorpe took a swipe when he reloaded. Watch Thorpe reload. No, too late. Tony Gray gets another goal, number seven. And we have seen a four-goal run from Hobart. Once down 15-2, it's now 15-6. 5.37 to go. Fazy trying to win the faceoff of Syracuse. O'Connor had a cross on it for a moment, but Bob Fazy's got it. Syracuse has possession. They are really playing hard on the ball. They, they go after the man with the ball constantly. Hobart trying to pressure the ball. They're jumping. Syracuse changing. They got to wait till they, now they get somebody out of the box. Fiata in. Syracuse with that big second quarter, 7-1 advantage. That really put them on top. Hobart's come back a bit, though, with a 4-0 run, showing some life. Bettinger inside, tried to lob one. A little alley-oop attempt for Matt Ryder, but he couldn't quite come up with it. Long, long pass. Good clearing pass. James Martin had a cross on it for a moment. Bill Palmer with a long stick. Number 15 lost his glove. Battle for it near midfield. No possession. Colsey had a cross on it. These guys don't even know where the ball is. They're just hitting the field. Dom Finn down. He is very upset. There's a, there's a Fiat on the far side tries to dig it out for Syracuse. Went behind the back and lost it on the sideline. So Hobart takes over. Wild play there for about 30 seconds. Absolutely no possession 
as SU gets the defensive midfielders on. You know, you can get a good look here as Hans Schmidt of the defensive minis come on. At why, if you have a lot of bodies, you can run teams down, Dave. I mean, you get into fourth quarter. Now, the game's not close at this point, nine goal difference. But, man, if, if you've got two midfields and somebody's got three, after a while, it's going to catch up to you. When I say three, three good midfields, and the ball's going to be off here, and it's going to be Syracuse ball. But if you've got guys you can just keep running in and can play with the competition, the more bodies you have, the better off you are. And Syracuse has a lot of them at midfield. Turnover Dale might be attributed to playing on synthetic surface, something Hobart does not do. Now, they played last week against Ohio Wesley and won a 13-12 thriller here at the Carrier Dome, but they're not used to it, and the ball really bounds high. Jeff King had no chance that time on the bounce. Boswell Field, that just would have gone plop. Yep. <laughs> I don't think it would have bounced at all. No. Puchia for Syracuse. Into the offensive zone. Laser Lockwood had a couple of goals early on in the game. Since then, has been held. King watching him. Lockwood inside, and that one was no. set wide, but there may be a push first or no. he was in the a crease. violation, That's crease violation against yep. Lockwood, right. There's the foot right there. As soon as it touches the yellow, and that was high anyway. O'Connor got it right in the midsection. 5'8", 2.40, and uh, Gracie has played well. Good outlet passes. Ball down again. Boy, Dave, the ball has been down a lot this half, right between the 40-yard lines on the football field. 35-yard lines. Yep. Guys hacking it all over the place. Kugavin goes on the sideline. Syracuse takes over. 3.43 to go, third period. 15-6 game. The Orangemen still comfortably ahead, but have seen Hobart with a spirited comeback here in the third quarter. Hobart not yielding. Of course, the trophy uh, at stake. Has a lot to do with it. Bar was open right through the crease. Didn't get it to him. Kusha with it. Driving in. Behind the cage for Jamie Archer. Senior from Nottingham. As Dale mentioned, he is the quarterback. Watched by Higgins. Try to feed out in front. We'll see who gets to it first near midfield. Thorpe trying to battle. Goes through everyone. Curry's there to pick it up. He has one goal already tonight. Good move. Curry in front. Nice pass for King, who hit the side of the net with it. Todd Burnham had the rebound for Hobart. And other number two on the field. Chris Saran harassed by Burnham before he goes for the outlet. Great pass for Barr. Perfect outlet pass to John Barr, streaking in. In front, little alley you play went through the crease. Archer didn't have the angle. Exciting play now, end to end, but it's going to be halted by the official's whistle. Hobart has possession. I don't know what happened, but uh, we'll see. A good look at that pass that was Barr trying to flip it over and the pass there, and the shot just not able to get the angle. It had to bounce backwards, actually, but. Uh, Hobart now has the ball, have to clear. Cable Maddox reaching the 100 career point mark. He's a guy that Coach Simmons said, he can play anywhere, he can play for anybody. Three, one, you name it. He liked him a lot. And he is uh, not disappointed, I don't think. Team's leading score. O'Connor, good roll dodge move. Nice. He got away with a long stick. Nice play ahead for Watt. Hobart now in the offensive zone. There's Maddox, number 14. Nice. Good strip from behind defensively from Syracuse. Barr brings the other way. Maddox took a swipe at him, but John Barr still got it. Watch by Higgins and then O'Connor. Matt Ryder reverses his field. Makes him so tough behind the cage. Constantly spinning, ducking, and moving. Great, great. You. They're going to get double teamed way back from the crease. He and they tried can't... to hit Archer, but good defensive recovery made. Bobby Wynn was there, and Higgins picks up with a long stick. Lockwood harassing, stripped from behind, taking a hack at him. See, so you can't be just an offensive other. player. You see what Laser did. He started it off, got the ball back, and now he's got an opportunity. Here he comes. He winds. He shoots that wide. Gracie. What does a goaltender think, Dale, when he sees Charlie Lockwood coming at him with a full head of steam, and instead of 
rushing toward the net, taking a five-foot shot. He's just going to whine and let his 100-mile-an-hour whistler go. He says, I hope there are enough people in front of me that it hits somebody before it gets to me. Please don't yeah. let it hit me. <laughs> That's I right. don't care if it goes in. Just don't let it hit me. <laughs> Down to 120 left third quarter. 15-6 game. Oh, good jump. Good move inside. Shot put on net by Pusha. Orange been up by nine. They've had a bit of a scoring drought. Last time Syracuse scored 12-14 in the third. Paul Sullivan make it 15-2. Donegan hit from behind. Loose ball in front. Oh, penalty flags drop. Pusha didn't get his shot off before he was hammered. Here's and an unusual looks like one for you. Have a slash coming up against Hobart. Yeah. Syracuse uh, third man up opportunity. They're going to whistle oh, oh, Thomas Pena on that one, number 22. He'll sit out. Check that. This is the second man-up opportunity. I didn't want to lose my head there. I knew that they weren't. Doesn't happen often. Nope. Saran, no saves this quarter, by the way, as we check the stats. Karen Ryan, our very efficient statistician, lets me know. Colsey works with Ryder. Lockwood climbed the ladder to get that one. Great feed inside. Dom Finn bounces it in. No look pass from Laser Lockwood set that one up, and Dom Finn finished. Great execution. Syracuse lead 16 6. Lockwood, see that? You, you, you said it exactly right, Dave. The no looker set it up. Everybody's trying to follow where's the ball going to go, and you know, 99 times out of 100, you got to look somewhere, but not there. Great job as Lockwood looks off the defense and feeds Finn for goal 16. His first of the night, Gracie. Shaking his head after that great play from Lockwood. You don't often see a no-look pass in the cross. Very rare. You have to have tremendous skill and accuracy. Pinpoint passing to be able to do that. O'Connor comes away with a face-off for a moment, but it's intercepted by Syracuse. Doyle picks it off. Good work for the Orangemen. Jim Morrissey in. Here's Casey Donegan. A couple of goals to his credit. Syracuse coaching staff really likes Morrissey. He's a young guy getting a lot of opportunity to play. Skinny Atlas product. Yep. Donegan behind the cage. The pick and roll work by Syracuse. Nice Casey move. Donegan inside tries to feed. Morrissey huh. was open for a moment, but they couldn't get it through the Hobart D. Two defensemen in the crease with the goalie with their sticks up. Hard <laughs> to get it through that. Yeah. Seven seconds now to go, as you can see. Third quarter. We're going to let off one final shot, but nice work. Oh, look at Roy the stick. Colsey, who has his stick broken in half. Look at that. Looks like a Bo Jackson job. <laughs> Except they didn't break it over his helmet. He'll get some new hardware. And we are done with three quarters of play. There's Bo. 16-6 after three. Back with a fourth after this. Welcome back, everybody. 16-6 game, beginning uh, period number four from the Carrier Dome. And at the end of the third, just listen. Ooh, wow. Colsey stopped the shot all right, and uh, he broke <laughs> Lost his the stick in the process. You know, That's some, what it takes to break a stick. Some of those handles are aluminum. I was talking to Rick Beardsley, and uh, they were telling me, Coach Simmons, some of the handles are now titanium. And uh, Rick Beardsley has one at $85 for a, for a titanium handle. Well, we saw the hit there with Colsey. Now watch what happens at the end. I'll tell you what, that's not titanium, or he wouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but lifted some weights there, Roy. Back to the action. Hobart with a mini run. Play continues to be very physical. It's Doyle tries to take out Hobart's number 36. Chip Knutson. Let's look at Mark Fietta, and looks like a shot to the head and a slash is going to be called. So Syracuse will get a another man down. Is that Finn? I think they got Doyle on that. Do looks Doyle, like okay. Matt Doyle, yeah, yep. number 29. 29, you're right. So. They've hit double figures now, at least in opportunities. They're two for nine right now, but this is opportunity number 10. Great triggers play. 
Tim Watt out there. He has a goal. Gray has a couple tonight. Yet another man up. Cable Maddox. Watched by Thorpe. Curry has a goal. Also number 10. Maddox winds. That one high and wide of the goal. We'll see who's closest to it. Chris Saran's reaction. Well, he's, he's, still, hear it. he's directing traffic, yep. and he wants to make sure everybody knows where they should be on this man-down situation. Burnham starts. Maddox to Curry. 14-15 and counting, and apparently one of the balls, loose balls, yep. got onto the field for a moment. Play stopped just for a second, and they'll trigger things from behind the cage again. They're going to bring it over on the side. Now they make sure everybody knows where the ball is, and they start. Statesman on the man up. Burnham try to work to Maddox on the side, but instead Thorpe comes away with it. Former J.E. Eagles streaking in, Reggie Thorpe. Get it in the box there as he wants to do it. Now that releases the penalty, so He's Syracuse got a will be even. Long stickman and Chad Smith still out there. Good feed. Donegan couldn't quite get to him, though. Gracie did a nice job of anticipating that play. Dale broke it up. He stopped the penalty, however, and got his man out of the box by getting possession in the other team's goal area. That releases anybody who's been penalized, unless it's a non-releasable penalty. Ball down, Syracuse up with it. Mike Doyle took a big hack there, no call. Syracuse has possession. 13 and a half to go, fourth quarter. Jim Morrissey, former skinny Atlas Laker with it. Watch by Higgins. It used to be some of those small schools. You'd never see anybody at Syracuse uh, playing anyway. And uh, you got a lot of guys from Jordan Elbridge, still FM, and Jamesville DeWitt. But a lot of guys, Skinny Atlas, Jordan Elbridge, the, still got Yorktown, of course. Homer. Yeah, the Homer Tully area has produced quite a few standouts as well. Yep. South of Syracuse. Casey Donegan working on O'Connor. He has a couple goals, maybe going for the hat trick. Steve Aarons into the game, 25. Paul Sullivan had a very impressive goal to start out the second half. Good feed, Aarons got a shot off wide of the cage. SU, good backup play from Donegan, and they retain possession. Nice feed, nice look as he came off the crease, but uh, got a shot off, not on cage. Fred Amaya lost it momentarily, burn him there for Hobart. We'll see who comes up with it. Bugavan, excellent effort. The orange, Steve Aarons has got it. AC Donegan, very elusive. Jitterbug out there, only five foot seven, but great quickness. Makes him tough to stop defensively. Fred Amaya, in close. Really uh, crowded there in the crease. Oh. Loose ball, Sullivan had a great shot at Gracie, still loose. Gracie made one save, pushing and shoving, and a whistle. And a push is going to be called against Hobart. Syracuse will keep it in the offensive end. Mapstone uh, pushing from behind. Ball up in the air, there it's down, and now as he comes in, takes a shot, save, and that's where all the, that's where all the, play, that's the push right there. Mapstone, you can't do that. Freddy Amaya behind the cage. Matt Doyle with it. We saw halftime portion of the broadcast tonight. He had a great goal at the end of the first half. Sullivan, a whistler and a score. Paul Sullivan just whipped that one off to the right of Gracie, who had no chance at all to stop it. As he goes upper left, and the Orangemen now lead 17-6. Gets the ball out. So Matt Doyle will get the assist. Nice assist, actually. Watch Doyle. Looks for the open man. He rips him stick side high. So Doyle on the assist. Sullivan on the goal. Makes it 17-6. 11.34 left in the game. Second goal of the night for Paul. Nice move by Pusha up with the face. Pusha brings in. He's handled a faceoff too as well. He and Bob Facey have had a great night. A lot of SU success tonight has got to go to those guys. Lockwood streaking in. Good feed. Morrissey was open in the crease for a moment. Syracuse runs the motion offense. Matt Doyle went to Morrissey who lost it momentarily. Donegan comes away with a good effort. 
Lockwood top of the box. Watch out when he's got it. Good feed in front. Shot to goal. Husha gets it. Charlie Lockwood with a great pass. And the Orangemen have a 12-goal lead. It's 18-6 under 11 minutes to go. Of course, the idea is can you get the ball to somebody who's really close? They don't have to go too far to make the shot. And uh, Higgins not able to stop. The free shot as Donegan looks. Passes back. Laser passes in. And right there, Pusha's shot. Laser should get an assist, I think. Two and three this year for Andy Pusha. And SU with a 12 goal advantage now. George Needham facing off. Actually, he's going to switch up last moment. Uh, Procedure, they didn't get the procedure, right? Didn't yeah, even get didn't, it. He wasn't even mixed. That's why you're there. They were both there. He wasn't in. Uh, they weren't ready to play in the time the uh, little beeper went off. So That is a procedure violation. And it goes to Syracuse, 12 goal lead. Dom Finn played a very solid game tonight. Watched by O'Connor with a long stick. Mark Fiat had a goal in the first half. A lot of contribution from all players in the roster tonight have been out there. It's been a good team effort. Fietta wide, scores again. Mark Fietta, Gracie just humbled beside himself. Very tough shot to stop. High whistler and never even got across on it. Tough because you're screened a lot of the times and the ball, you don't know where it is. Now it goes out, so he turns to look and you saw his reaction. He uh, didn't see the ball until it was past his stick. Man, that is a tough shot, that high heat. Sometimes they start out low, Dave, and they end up right. high, too. Those are really hard to stop. Like a fastball in baseball, and it's high up there. It's very, very difficult to hit in baseball and stop in lacrosse. You know, I, I'm not surprised, but impressed, I guess I would say, with the intensity level with a 13 goal lead and 10 minutes left to go in the game from both teams. Everyone's still playing hard. Absolutely. Chance for the SU coaching staff to see some guys that have not got a lot of playing time in the first five games of the year. Great effort from Thorpe as the Orange clear into the offensive zone. Matt Doyle is a slow whistle. A couple of penalty flags are dropped. Syracuse may have a man up coming here. Flag down, Orange in the offensive zone. Hold, slash, slash. O'Connor is going to be whistled for it. Coach Simmons talking to Tim Neal, trainer. So Syracuse gets another uh, man up opportunity, number three. Hobart bench. Well, the Statesmen will regroup after this game. It looks like they're going to drop a two and two. But still an excellent test for them as they face their second Division I opponent of the year. Orange now the man up, shot to score quickly by Dom Finn. And Gracie never saw that one either. That'll make them three for three here, man up. Quick look is all you can get here. I was just, our producer said there's a quick look, and it's going to be quick because it's going to go that quickly. Too quickly for Gracie to stop, much less see it. There he is in the cage. Dom Finn, no assists this year, but nine goals in 93. One of the catalysts on this team. Some of the fans starting to leave. Well, we got attendance over 5,000. Attendance 5, mark yeah. tonight, yeah, that's right. Dell 5,157 on hand. Many coming from Geneva to watch the game. Double header going on before that. Nazareth from the Rochester area, defending Division III champs, took on Lemoyne. So a lot of area schools taking advantage of the Carrier Dome. The ideal conditions. The whole Northeast really blanketed by the blizzard of 93, and no one's recovered yet. It's just been very tough for programs to go. 14 goalies. We head down to the nine-minute mark. Burnham with it. Watched by Kugavan. Todd Burnham been really beat up tonight. We could see Kugavan just taking shots at him. The Band-Aid concession after this. Boy, huh? he needs it. Look at Kugavan. He's from Penyon, right down there near Geneva. You got it. Right off Cuca Lake. Beautiful area down Beautiful, there. Beautiful, yep.
Hobart try to penetrate, maybe uh, take some momentum into their next game as they continue the season. Checking the uh, for Hobart next game. There we have it. Gettysburg College coming up on April 10th, trying to get that a home game. Considering the conditions of Boswell Field in Geneva, that may not be easy. Taking on a lot of Division I teams this year, Dale. They already played University of Notre Dame. We mentioned Notre Dame looking like a strong bid for the Midwestern representative in the NCAA tournament. And of course, as every time Syracuse and Hobart meet, the Krauss Simmons Trophy is on the line. And it means a lot to these players. Syracuse will keep it again. It sure seems that way. So they played Notre Dame, took on Syracuse. They'll play Penn State, Cornell, Michigan State. A lot of Division I teams yeah. in a Division III program. And that is a good a couple, character builder for the playoffs. A couple of them, Penn State's a real improving lacrosse team. That's right. Farron's with it, knocked down, slow huh. whistle flags are down all over the place as we are under eight minutes. Jeff King uh, picked up a couple of uh, pushes and shoves here. Watch 34. Watch, the, watch him go through this. Whoa, take that. He pushes him out of the way. And watch King come and say, well, I'm not going to be out. Done, I'll do that twice. <laughs> and then he gets called for at least one of them. At least. There's Jeff, number 34. He's out. Man up so far, Syracuse, perfect, three for three. Yeah. Hobart, 10 opportunities tonight. They've come through on two thus far. Chances are there'll be another one. I would, I'd, I'd, I'd say <laughs> I would chances so. are good with 7.52 left. First teamers in now. Pass a little bit too high from Matt Ryder, who already has four goals tonight. O'Connor going after it, physical play from Colsey. Roy Colsey's a player Dale sneak up on you. He's excellent with a finesse as Coach O'Hara and staff watch on, but he's physical too. He'll hit, he'll hit you. He's a big guy, 5'11, 192. Bobby Wynn triggers play. Back to Gracie. Nice pass by Gracie. Good outlet. Hobart starts off play. Whistle, and it looks like we've got a timeout called by the Statesman. 7.28 to go. B.J. O'Hara wants to talk things over with his team. He's still teaching, still instructing. I don't sure. think it's, you know, it's not for this game. It's obviously beyond that point, but he definitely is trying to make uh, these guys understand what he wants, when he wants it, and uh, that's what the timeout is for. Part of the 5,157 fans on hand inside the Carrier Dome tonight. And it's warming up outside in Central New York, a great sign. Good for Hobart. Great for all the fans, too. I figure three more weeks, the snow will be out of my driveway. Maybe a little longer than that. Yeah, okay, I'm not. <laughs> And a score by quarters. SU had a great second period, seven of eight goals. Hobart came back, had a four-goal run in there, and since then it's been all orange. 20 to six lead. Syracuse has racked up a lot of goals in this game, and let's not forget, coming up this weekend, Cornell, the Big Red, against Syracuse. Second leg of the traditional Central New York rivalry. Check your local listings for broadcast time here on Super Sports. Richie Moran, the uh, wily veteran coach, to use a couple of cliches. Boy, if anybody can throw something crazy at you that makes you think a lot during the game, it's Richie Moran. And uh, got it. they just released. I don't know if they were down a man. I guess they're all even. Sides are even now. Yeah. Hobart with it. Zach and Nino, impressive freshman. They're trying to kick it out of there. You can do anything with that ball except pick it up and throw it. State's been unable to control as we're now under seven minutes. Chris Saran has had another great game. <laughs> he had a lot comes. of saves, and now he maybe wants to get an assist. Look at him skate across midfield with a leap. That'll get the fans going. Now he's going to stay in play he's a little while. in there. they got to give it go to him. Oh, he couldn't get the shot off, and he gets hammered instead. Penalty flag drop. Chris Saran just got slammed in the crease area. 
And exactly what Dale mentioned earlier, that if you're a goaltender or a long stick defenseman looking to score, it's like putting a bullseye right in your chest. He gets course, hammered. Mapstone knows that, and he hits right there. Now watch what he does later. He says, I didn't get you good enough. Oh. I think I'll hit you with the stick. And, of course, Saran knows it because uh, that's the way it is. He just wanted to go down and get everybody picked up, and uh, he's going to take a little break. That's it for Chris Saran. Great effort tonight. Six goals allowed. Garrett Esposito, 5'11", junior from Manlius in there. Or Manlius? On the other end, Ryder got free in front, scores again. Well, they can't be too upset with their uh, man up. They're four of five. Syracuse puts in goal 21. Look. Nobody on the decrease defending, and that's it. Five goals from Matt Ryder. That matches his season high and the five goals he had Saturday against the Brown Bears. He has really come alive as a great scorer. Coming in, 100 um, career goals, five today for Matt, and as we mentioned, tenth on the all-time Syracuse scoring list. Orange up by 15. Look at the face-off stat. Yeah. Ryder was one point behind uh, Archer coming in at uh, 24. I'm sure he'll take that today. As what do we have for Archer? Esposito gets tested. Archer may have an assist. I don't believe Jamie has scored in this game. Got goals from just about every other offensive player for Syracuse. I don't think Jamie's put one in. He is not. Orange with a big lead. Hobart tries to get a goal on Esposito, and they do it. Statesman get one in there. And that's got to help the momentum a little bit as Todd Mundell scores, number 11. 21-7. Mundell got the ball out, and then he just uh, beats Esposito. On the right side. See it again. Left-handed shot. Stop what was a 6-0 run from Syracuse. It's been a game of runs. And the Orangemen have been running down the Statesman all night long. O'Connor comes away with it. Possession for the Hobart Statesman as we're under six minutes. A couple of big sticks out there. Will they make a change. Oh, poor pass. Syracuse will get this ball. Zaccanino trying to get that one from Matt Crowther. Thrown away. King comes back on along with Mark Birnbaum, number 23, seeing action for the first time. So both coaches, Dale, a chance to use a lot of guys. And as you mentioned, B.J. O'Hara never wanted to give up, but he's also teaching his players a lot, looking forward to the next game against Gettysburg, what they can learn in these last few moments against a number two team in the nation in Division I. Ooh, long pass, and that's going to... I don't know, we got a, got a horn. Horn blue. Yeah. Play continues. And now a penalty flag drop. Let's see what that's all about. One minute slashing penalty yeah. apparently call. I just wonder what the horn was before that. Uh, at any rate, we'll get a look at... Uh, the save to keep the ball in. Great effort. Doesn't matter what the score is. All the players are still giving all their effort as he slides in. That's so, the way to do it, though. You've got to go on the shorts. You've got to have some cloth when you slide, Dale, on the turf. <laughs> Not your skin. <laughs> well, this is, uh, as you predicted, we would have at least one more man up for Hobart. There it is. Number 11. Feet in front, Gray. Kicks a field goal. That's good. Yeah. Between the goalposts, he had a little trouble can handling we give, that. Can we give Hobart three goals? <laughs> no, I think not. Maybe Paul Pasqualoni is in attendance tonight, impressed with that. Have a signee. Watt with it. Hit the five-minute mark, fourth quarter. Syracuse up 21-7. We have a football score, Dale. Yeah, that's true. So there you go. Shot on net. Esposito up to the task. Garrett with a nice save. Outlets to Smith with a long stick. Chad would love to get one here. 
Syracuse has some numbers. Wines, bouncer, but right there to stick it aside is the goaltender, Jim Gracie. Nice hustle. Orangeman retained possession. Le Masseur with it, 46 getting some time. In low, they go to Eric Knaus, and another penalty flag is dropped. Mike Doyle may be the guilty party. A technical push has been called. Well, that'll be uh, Hobart's penalty, so Syracuse. Man up coming here. Got a man up. There's Jim Gracie. Came in with a 12-2 game, so he's surrendered nine. Team has scored five in the second half. There's the man up goal situation. Hobart three for 11. The Orange much more efficient, 75%. Three for four. And they have a big lead. Jamie Archer, 21 goals. Archer doesn't have any yet, which is surprising. Lockwood winds and puts that one wide of Gracie. Syracuse there to back up, and the Orange retain possession. Matt Ryder with his five goals. Triggers play. Colsey has scored tonight as well. Try to go in low. Good feed, and it ends up in the right place at the right time for Steve Bettinger who gets another goal. Went right between a couple of Hobart long sticks. Bettinger fouled it in his cross and easily beat Gracie. Yep. Went right through. Bounced once. And he took the one hopper and uh, put it right back in Gracie's face. Watch. There it is. So 22 to 7. 2 and 1 for Steve Bettinger today. Give him three more points. Coming in, he was 5 and 2 this year. 5'10, 169 pound senior from Hewlett, New York. 405, as you see on the faceoff. The Orangemen have completely dominated that stat. No possession indicated still. O'Connor really working hard for Hobart, number 40 with a long stick. A lot of hacking and bumping going on. Sullivan nearly gets crushed. He goes down. He's holding his knee. Well, that might be trouble. Paul Sullivan put on the brakes to avoid a hit right near the football 35-yard line, and the SU trainers quickly out to attend oh to Paul boy. Sullivan. That may be dangerous. Watch Dale as he just puts on the brakes to avoid a big hit. We'll see it. Here he comes. Ouch. Ooh. It buckled a bit. Yeah. It, Difficult to tell how yeah. serious it is. Maybe just a sprain, but you could see it twist. Here it is, full speed. Yeah, he planted to, to make a move, and uh, that's an awful feeling. Sophomore from Scarsdale. What a great job he's done this year, filling Absolutely. in for John Barr during his suspension, as we mentioned earlier. Could be a number of things. Could be as serious as an ACL injury, an anterior cruciate ligament. We certainly hope it's not that. Or it could be as minor as a sprain. And as you can imagine, Coach Simmons very concerned. There's a glaring disadvantage to playing on synthetic surface. Football players will attest to that. It's a hard surface, and sometimes your foot just does not give when you plant. You're right. It doesn't slide, and uh, we'll see if we can see it here. That was it. Ooh. Yeah, it yeah, twisted. When it, when it slowed down, maybe it's just a twisted knee. Does, doesn't make, makes my knee hurt just to watch it. Yeah. It makes my knee hurt just to watch it. Anybody who's even ever sprained a knee, can, I've never had a, obviously blown out. You can't imagine what that must feel like. We don't know what this is. We know it's a knee injury. You saw it on the replay. <laughs> Tim Neal will ice him right down, and they'll check that out as soon as possible. There is the knee. He is not touching it with the ground, and that's not a good sign. He's obviously needs some help to get off the field. 3.47 on the frozen fourth quarter clock. Two goals for Paul Sullivan this evening's action. He was a big factor all over the ball, very physical player. Considering how physical Syracuse has been this year, Dale, not a lot of injuries. That's no. one thing we haven't seen. You, you really, I shouldn't say you don't see a lot. You don't see, it's not like football. I don't right. think you see as many injuries in, in lacrosse. You, you see a lot of contusions and a lot of abrasions and things, especially on the artificial surface, but you don't see that many knee injuries. Uh, too many, obviously. Uh, one is too many, but now they're back with 342 left, and the crowd a little 
more quiet now. So a bit of a dark cloud hanging over this SU win. We'll certainly see how Paul does and wish the best for him. That's not a season threatening or any kind of career threatening injury. But we know from seeing people like Holly Oslander of the SU women's team and Dan Conley with football that the injuries with a knee can be very serious. Heading down to the three minute mark fourth quarter 22 seven game SU with a huge advantage. Timeout Hobart. And a timeout called by Hobart. B.J. O'Hara wants to do some teaching here and make sure his team with this possession executes properly. The kind of guy that's always looking ahead. He knows he can't win this game. He has Gettysburg coming up. Then they stay in New York State at Alfred. That's on the 14th of April. Then at Penn State. By that time, the field should be all right outside, I think. B.J. O'Hara. Here's uh, Andy Robinson, our uh, our best dressed cameraman. <laughs> no knee pads, a nice sweater. Very nice, Andy. He's decked out, looking yeah, good. Yeah, looking good. Hey, okay. Yeah, he looks like if you didn't know better, you think you just picked that camera up and held it for show. He doesn't really look like your uh, everyday uh, cameraman. No knee pads. Nice job, Andy. Sartorial thumbs up to you, big guy. <laughs> And a nice slow zoom up to Dave and I. <laughs> Three minutes now as we're back underway. Orange been in what you could call a laugher until a Paul Sullivan injury. Certainly it was that way. It has been physical all throughout, though, and uh, Hobart Even to the has last not moment. backed off uh, an inch. And you wouldn't expect him to. It's a traditional game. Mike Wynn with it, 45. Cable Maddox streaking in, tries to get off a shot, instead passes to a teammate. Went for Matt Crowther, 47, but it got through his cross. Good effort defensively from Syracuse, and Maya nearly had a cross on it. Tom Zaccanino. Hobart taking the time, running their offense. As you said, they're just this is not their only game. They want to make sure they got a learning situation. Should be Syracuse ball. Esposito out of the goal. There good first. Hustle. Yep, good hustle. Cable Maddox, very frustrated. You can understand why. Guy accustomed to scoring a lot of goals. Just has not been able to get on track due to a good Syracuse defensive effort. Mike Smiley, 36 with a long stick, starts this break. Toby Price, number six there. As we're under two minutes. Price streaks in. Feeds off. Shot put on net by number 37, Nick Licamelli, the senior from West Jenny. Loose in the corner, still inbounds for a moment, but it hits the sideline, and SU has possession. There's Nick. So the Orange will move on to four and two. As we've mentioned, Cornell coming up for Syracuse. Right here in the Dome Saturday. Two o'clock face-off if you're planning to make it out. Coach Simmons and the whole Syracuse program appreciates all the support. And that's another excellent matchup. Back to Division I competition on Saturday for Syracuse. As we go down to the 110 mark of the fourth quarter. Now, if you're Esposito, you don't want to give up another goal. Neither does the defense. No way. No matter who's in, you want to keep it right where it is. Oh. Pass open. in front and open shot and a score from Hobart. Tom Zaccanino, number six, gets it. First goal for him. Found him open on the crease and Zaccanino. Challenges Esposito, they slid. He wards off the slide and uh, goes down low. Esposito not able to stop it. Faceoffs up to Syracuse, 20 to 12. And uh, Fazy out for Syracuse. 
and he's going to battle with Parcells. George Needham out there, actually, Dale. Is it? Yep. Getting some time. 39. His old eyes, Dave. <laughs> Been a long night. Yep. 33 seconds up there. 14 goal SU lead. So Syracuse with an impressive effort tonight. And B.J. O'Hara's team will get back on the bus about an hour long trip west and then south to lovely Geneva of Seneca Lake. And that's another beautiful area. Wine country there. When it's nice out, everything's in bloom. It's one of the best drives you'll have right down Seneca Lake. Yep. 14. Go to Watkins Glen. Some of the. Yeah, I've been there several times. Yeah. To cover the racing. Cable Maddox. As we head down to the 10 second mark, let's see if they try one more shot or just settle with what they've got. Good pass. Esposito had to face a shot again from Zach and Eno. Coach Desco and Coach Simmons will enjoy another Syracuse victory. Seconds left, and that is going to do it from the dome tonight. The Orangemen move on to four and two, two games over 500. Coach Simmons and the Orange team again holding on to the Kraus Simmons Trophy. Back after this from the Carry Dome, 22 8 the final. Welcome back, everybody. 22-8, the final score. Matt Ryder, five goals before 5,157. And Coach Simmons, Jr., another victory to hundreds of victories. Well, Syracuse coach talking with reporters after the game. And, Dale, very impressive effort for Syracuse all the way around. Absolutely. Very physical game. Bob. Both teams played it right to the end. And, uh, of course, the biggest thing, obviously, from Syracuse's viewpoint is uh, the injury to Paul Sullivan. So the Orangemen advance 4-2, the 4-2 uh, record with a 22-8 victory over Hobart, winning the Kraus Simmons Trophy back for another year. Don't forget the next game here on Super Sports, Cornell and Syracuse. Check your local listings. This has been a presentation of the Super Sports Television Network. Copyright 1993, a product of Adelphia Cable Communications. So long, everybody.